Hello, how, how are you doing today? <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's a little rough here. So, uh, this is Calm Waters, Calm Waters Living here. And if you haven't noticed, things are a little fuzzy. Kind of hard to clearly make out who I am. What's with the picture? Why, why is it so fuzzy? Well, I was wondering that myself. And then I realized, hey, this is a really good analogy to what's going on today and what I wanted to talk about. Calm Waters Living is based on the Gospels. Calm Waters Living is based on truth. Common sense. God-given rights. You don't have to believe in the Gospels. You don't have to believe that there's a God. You don't have to believe in gravity. But let me tell you, you step off the roof of your house, gravity will prove itself unequivocally. It will absolutely prove that gravity's real. And that's why you are able to stand on this earth. Well, the gospel's very similar. You can't see it can't touch it you can't even really feel it until you begin to embrace it how can you feel gravity you ever been on a roller coaster Guy pops over the top and it drops down you kind of get that weightless feeling for a second that's what it's like without gravity and all of a sudden, it kind of grabs you again, and you're back in your seat, solid, safe. You feel that you're like you you're, you're belong to something. That's gravity. That's gravity saying, you're solid, you're safe, you belong to the earth. Well, the gospel's very much the same way. You can't touch it. You can't see it. You can feel it if you'll embrace it. And as you do that, you gain hope. You gain strength. You gain an understanding that you belong to something. Something that's greater than you are. Something that can help you become a better you. That's the gospel. And it's called the gospel of Jesus Christ. You've heard the gospel referred to as the gospels because of Peter, James, and John, right? Well, you've also got, you know, John the Baptist. You've got Mark. And you've got all these other apostles and prophets in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, right? Well, you don't have the gospel of Mark you have the gospel of Peter. You have the gospel of James. Each one of those is the gospel of Christ. Because each one of them speak of and testify of the reality and the truth of Jesus Christ. So you don't have multiple gospels. You have multiple people testifying of the one gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel that speaks of love, of unifying, of unity, of help and support of one another, that those who have give, and those who have enough but don't have enough to give would give, and those who don't have enough would receive with gratitude as those who give would give with gratitude for what they have to give. That's the essence of the Gospels. It's a Gospel of love, a Gospel of understanding, a Gospel of unifying, of unity, 
of being of one mind, of one heart, and one hope, a hope of eternal life, a hope of progression throughout the eternities. And that's what this earth life is for. This earth life is all about getting through the phase, getting through the haze, getting a greater clarity of who we are, what we might be able to become, and how we can solidify those characteristics that make us individuals, that enable us to help each other, and to also need help from others for those things that we're not all strong in. Not everybody can lift 500 pounds. Not everybody can figure out a calculus problem. Not everybody can manage five or six or seven people. Not everybody has all the same talents. Otherwise, we'd all be the same person. And we'd only need one individual, not two. Not three, not five, not 10, not 12, just one. That's really kind of boring. So, we all have weaknesses. And we all have strengths. Let's focus on our strengths so we can help out others who have weaknesses and vice versa. I just want to share with you today that all the craziness that's going on in 2023 because we're listening to the wrong voice. We're listening to those who are telling us we aren't good enough. We're listening to that voice that says, what if I can't? Why don't we listen to the voice that says, you're good enough. You can do this. What if you take that action and someone says thank you? What if you fall down and you get up again and you learn, well, I won't do that again because I didn't like falling down that way. And another person says, man, you're wise. You're a great person. How did you figure that out? And then you can help that person understand how you figured out how you fell down. And then maybe that person won't fall down that way. And now we got two people who are doing better. And we got three people. And then six people. And then 12 people. And then 24 people. And then 48 people. And then 400,000 people. You know what I mean. All because, what if we can what if we keep trying and using our strengths to overcome those weaknesses? Then the Gospels make sense. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's whatever. Right? Don't covet it. Ask him how he got it. I guarantee that the person will say, well, you know, it wasn't that hard. Well, I know, it seems hard to be. Well, have you ever tried this? Well, no, I didn't think about that. Well, if you try this, maybe that will happen. Hey, I like that. I, you begin a conversation. You begin to understand what it is to grow. What it is to go through hardship. That's what the Gospels are about. As you are given much, you are expected to give back a little bit more than the person who doesn't have much. But the person who has much all of a sudden seems to be able to do a little bit better so they can give a little bit more. And the person who just didn't have, for whatever reason, the same opportunities that you had or the Joneses next door had can help them understand you can do it. We'll show you how 
to do it because we've been there. And then everybody is on in more of an equal playing field. Not everybody will be the same. It's not everybody wants the same thing. But everybody wants to be able to get better. Everyone wants to be able to help another person be a little better. And for those of you who say, oh no, there's people out there who don't want to help other people. That's because they learned that. That's not something they knew as they grew up as a little child. I have never, ever seen a little child want to take away from someone else. Oh, there are young children, very young children, who have watched their parents or their siblings take things and hoard things and that's where they learned it from. But there's no child, no infant that wants to take away from someone else when they have enough. It's just not the case. It's not of their nature. How do I know that? Because every child is saved in Christ. Every child who is not of the age of accountability is saved in Christ because he is a just, righteous leader, God, who would have all his brothers and sisters, all of God's children, to return home because he's charitable, he's loving. He's kind. He knows what it is to go through hardship. He knows what it is to be hated by his own. He knows what it is to be loved. And he knows what it is to sacrifice. All sacrifice brings to pass understanding. Understanding brings wisdom. And as we exercise wisdom with understanding, we share our love for one another. And we share our love to one another. That's the gospel. Brothers and sisters, friends, neighbors, family members, remember, we got here because of two people deciding that they were going to become one. And as they became one, we became their product, their offspring, their child. Let us stop being fuzzy about what life is. Let us stop arguing about what it is to be one. Let us stop arguing and fighting and let us start loving and helping and uplifting. Let's live a gospel-centered life. Let's seek after calm waters and grow while we're on those calm waters. And look at the past and see what we can do to make a better future. This is Calm Waters, signing out. You have a great day. You have a day of hope. You have a day of happiness. A day of joy. Remember to smile. Remember to say, I like you. Thank you. I hope you have a great day.